Hi everyone, thanks for joining us for another episode of Eye on Hako. Today we'll be going over deep handling circuit boards, so make sure you stick around. Alright, welcome back. My name is Kenta from American Hako, and today I'll be talking about the DPF300 deep handling router table. That's the one I have in front of me here today. It uses a spindle and a drill bit, so you, you get the high-end quality finish that you would expect from a high-end router table. But it's also a manual table, so you have the ease of use of those manual tools. There's no programming required. There's no special fixtures that you need to use, and there's no setup time. All you have to do is select the proper guide and bit for your particular board and you're ready to go. So that's what makes this DPF300 really great. It's great for our customers who deal with low production runs, for example. High mix, low volume type of customers who just want to come in and run maybe five boards or board A. And then they have another board B, a different board layout, but they want to do maybe 15 of that and then go back to board A for some reasons. It's great for high mix, low volume type of customers, low production runs. This is a great tool for you because again, there's no setup time, no programming required. Uses a spindle with drill bits so you get that high quality finish. And also there's a vacuum tube attached to the back, sucking out all of the PCB dust directly at the source. Great tool and I'm gonna get into that here in a minute. Okay, now before we get rolling with the demo, let's go over just a little bit of the features and benefits of the DPF 300. We did have a previous model, it's called the DPF 200. It ran on pneumatic, air, spindle, and electric to operate the vacuum. With the 300, we eliminate the need for a pneumatic spindle. So the table now runs all electric both the spindle and the vacuum. So there's no more need to run a separate airline on the 300. That eliminates a lot of the hassle, right? All electric, vacuum, and spindle. The spindle has now been upgraded to a more, much more durable industrial grade spindle. Rotates at 24,000 RPM. The tabletop is still ESD safe. Comes with a additional external vacuum hose to pick up any remaining debris on your work surface. Comes with the ESD wrist strap and a connection point. And it also has casters on the table itself. So in case you need it, you need to move it from one location to another, you can do so. It's still portable, right? So how do you start using the DPF 300? Well, the main thing you have to figure out, first of all, is figure out the width of your, your tabs or, or your routes. And that's really easy to do. All you have to do is grab your panel or your circuit board, which has the routes on them. Grab a caliper and measure the distance of your channels. And you can see that it's about 2.04 millimeters, about two millimeters in width. So with that, with me knowing that, I can now go ahead and select my guide and bit. Guess what size guide and bit I'm gonna select for this sample demo. Bing! I'm gonna select 2.0 millimeter guide and bit. Now, it's easy, right? So that's what I have already attached here on my table. You can see from the side angle view here, it says DPF-GI-2.0. So I have the proper size guide. I have the bit already installed in here. So I'm ready to use the table as is. If, if you ever need to change the guide or bits, there's a process that you, I can go over with you later on. The table does come with wrenches and um, tools that allow you to go ahead and, uh, and select and change out the guides and bits. And I'll go over that with you in a minute, but let's, Go over here and start on the demo real quick. All right, so now I'm gonna show you guys a demo of deep handling this sample board that we have here. But before we get started on that, let's go over a little bit on the control panel of the DPF 300. Here we have the main disconnect switch. 
turn it, it'll give power on to the machine. You see that the light turns on. And then next to it, you have the start and stop buttons. And over here, you have the emergency stop button. And at the very end, you have a connection point for your ESD wrist strap. So that's the explanation of the front control panel. Make sure when you're using the table, you have an ESD wrist strap attached and make sure you're always using safety goggles. So now I'm gonna show you guys a demo of depaneling this sample board. Turn on the main disconnect switch. You'll see that the power light comes on. You'll see the start and stop button. So when you're ready to use, simply press the start button. When you're done using the machine, press the stop button. Then kill the power to the table. Now when you need to change your guides or bits because you have to work on different types of boards, this is how you do it. So these are some of the tools you'll need to replace the guides and bits. A couple of wrenches and a couple of hex screwdrivers. They all come with the table. So the first step, when you want to remove or replace your guides and bits, is to remove the vacuum hose or the vacuum tube that's attached to the end of the guide, just like that. From there, you're gonna grab your hex key and loosen one, two. Loosen those two set of hex screws. So you loosen one, take that out of the way. Loosen the other one, get that out of the way. And now you can remove the top guide from the entire mount. And from here, you wanna get, you wanna remove now a second set of set screws, one here, and there's one on the other end. Again, go ahead and remove one on the left side. And then go to the other side, the right side, and remove the screw on the other side. Once you have those two screws removed, you can now remove this headpiece, which will now give you access to the spindle and to the bit. Now that you have access to the spindle and the drill bit, you want to now use the 14 millimeter and 17 millimeter wrenches that is included with the table to release the drill bit. So the 14 millimeter goes on the bottom and the larger 17 millimeter goes up top. And you just want to loosen it up like you would any other type of chuck or collar. Once you have it loosened up, you can use your fingers. And from there, you can take out the drill bit. If you need to replace it with the new size bit and guide, go ahead and grab it at this point. So now I have a new bit that I'm going to insert into here, in there. You can finger tighten it up to a certain point. And then from there, again, use the 17 millimeter wrench to tighten down the drill bit. Once that is all the way secured, go ahead and grab your, the head mounting headpiece. This does have a direction which you want to mount it. You'll see a divot point right there. That should match up to the marking on the table down there. So align those two points up. 
like so. Grab the hex screws that you originally loosened up. Now you got the head piece mounted back in place. Now you want to go ahead and grab your new guide. Now that was a 1.9 millimeter bit that I put in there on the spindle. So now I have a 1.9 millimeter guide. I'm going to go ahead and place that over the bit. Grab your set of smaller hex screws. Right. Now the final, final part is to reattach the vacuum tube to the back of your guide, like so. That completes the process of changing out your guides. I just changed out my 2.0 millimeter guide and bits to a 1.9 millimeter guide and bit. One of the unique features of the DPF 300 are these guides and bits and this vacuum tube. You can see that the vacuum tube is attached directly behind the guide and that's to collect all the PCB dust directly at the source of the cut so that the operators are not touching or breathing in all of the PCB dust. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about how to replace your vacuum filters. Now before you get started on working on the vacuum filters, just make sure you have some kind of gloves and some kind of mask. We're all used to wearing these right now, right? Make sure you use any, some kind of mask and gloves, okay? Now remember I was talking about the vacuum tube that's attached to the back end of those guides. That tube is connected down below underneath the table to a vacuum pump. And next to the vacuum pump, you'll find the canister right below here. This is where the vacuum filter is located. And this, the filter will need to be replaced every so often as it's collecting the PCB dust. Now when you're replacing the filter, you always want to remember to wear some gloves and also to wear some kind of mask so that you're not, wear, so now you're not breathing in the PCB dust. There are these three hinges. There's one here, there's one here, and there's one on the other side right here. You want to release each one of those hinges. And you'll be able to release or loosen up the cap and the filter all together. And from here, just remove the filter, place a new one in there. And then you just want to carefully reinstall the cap in place. Wait, one. There's another one. And here's the last one. There you go. That's how you place the vacuum filters. The table also has an external vacuum hose that's attached to the vacuum pump underneath the table. Okay, a quick recap of the DPF 300 routing table that we talked about today. It's a manual deep handling router table, no programming required, no setup time involved, no need for fixtures, no need for specialized dies. All you have to do is grab your board and run it across the spindle. The table uses guides and bits depending on the size of your channel width or your tab width it has a vacuum tube attached to the back end of the guides so it's what does that mean it's collecting all the pcb dust directly at the source of the cut so you're not breathing in or you're not touching any of that pcb dust really safe for the operators to use it's now an all electric system it has a light that turns on when it's on in use so that people around you know that it's on and it also has an external vacuum hose that you can use at the end of the day to collect up any remaining debris or dust that may be on your table. All in all, the DPF 300, it's a great product that incorporates the manual aspects of the hand tools and the manual um, deep handling methods. 
and at the same time it incorp also incorporates the high quality cuts that you'll find in a high-end routing table. So it's a combination of everything put together. It's a great product. Now I can go on and on and on talking about how great this product is, but hey, listen, we're out of time here for today. I gotta go. If you wanna know more information about the table, visit www.hakousa.com slash DPF-300. That'll take you to the DPF-300 landing page. On that page, you'll be able to find more information about what we talked about today. You can also email us or call us at support at hakousa.com or 1-800-88-HAKO. Now, I hope you guys learned something today. I hope it was helpful. And remember, keep your, we'll see you next time. Keep your eye on Hakko.